Thank you for coming. My name is James Pasto um, from the North End Historical Society. And I'm pleased to uh, introduce our guest. Um, he carried out field work in the North End between 2001 and 2006. And the result was the book that he's going to talk about tonight, the research. And I'll introduce him by his first name, Augusto, because I won't try to pronounce his last name. <laughs> He'll tell you about <laughs> I was telling James that my last name, which is Fedra you all know, it's a kind of nightmare, even in Italy. So I always have these kind of problems of people mispronouncing my last name, which is okay. I mean, I mean, you know. the only thing I, I, I like to, you know, to the stuff is not connected with the North End, what is connected with Italian immigration in the United States. There is a famous um, picture at the Library of the Congress showing an immigrant crossing the border in the late 19th century and talking with an officer. That was the moment when people crossing the border actually were pronouncing their own last name. And that's why many last names of Italian heritage are misspelled. I can only think what would be my last name. <laughs> 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 so, but anyway, and, and, uh, yes, I, I am, first of all, thank you very much. I can thank the, the, the society to, to allow me to be here tonight because uh, the, the, the kind of feeling that uh, you have, uh, I am an anthropologist, a social anthropologist, and uh, when I do my, my research, I tend to stay a long time in the same place and I, of course, you know, you start building relationship, you start building feeling with the place that, that, that you are you know, doing research on. So I, I am really happy to be here in the North End and trying to, to tell what is my opinion of some little thing of the North End, which of course is just one of the many perspectives that people <coughs> can have. And uh, just to, so I, I, I'm really, really pleased to be here. For a long time, I, <laughs> the North End was a, a kind of second home, and I'm going to tell you Actually, I'm telling you immediately the story of... Uh, I came from Naples, southern Italy, and uh, I don't know if any of you guys have been to Naples, probably, yes. And my city is famous for one thing, because it's a mess. <laughs> so I have to say that the first time that I came in, you know, and literally the first time, I felt immediately at home. Because I thought the parking place, people parking here, and other people parking there. So, oh gosh, I am home finally. <laughs> but that was a, unfortunately a misleading feeling that I'm going to analyze a little bit. So, uh, again, my, my research was focusing on one aspect of the North End, which are the religious festival in the North End. You know better than me that the North End from the first weekend of June to the first weekend in September, every single weekend there is a fest. And this fest is uh, uh, connected with the local patron saint of the original village of people that migrate from Italy to the, the, to the North End. And uh, it was, uh, I have to say, it is um, for me uh, a kind of uh, uh, let's say, special uh, symbols uh, in order to uh, try to understand a little better what is this uh, endless game on uh, ethnic identity, how people define themselves, uh, when they define themselves, how they use uh, symbols in order to define what they think they are, what they like to think they are, and then end up like that because very often is a matter of choice. We consciously make the choice of being Italian, being Napolitan. I always make this, this uh, consideration when, when I am in class talking about ethnicity. If I am in another state, I tell everybody I am Italian. If I am in Italy, I don't say I am Italian. I say I am Napolitan. 
But if I am in Naples, I am not allowed to say I am Napolitan, because actually I am from Caserta. Caserta is a city 10 miles far from Naples. And if I am in Caserta, I will not say I am from Caserta, but I am from Rione Van Vitelli, which is a specific neighbor of the city. So that is the game of uh, defining themselves with the idea of belonging. So unfortunately, the, the, the slide, I apologize, is not really the best. I started uh, this kind of uh, uh, what people think is the North End, and I had couple of definition when uh, uh, telling us that the North End is the Italian neighborhood or uh, like the last one that was made by, unfortunately you cannot see, it's made by Anna Maria Martellone. Anna Maria Martellone is uh, one, uh, is an historian from Florence, Italy, <coughs> writing a wonderful book about uh, the North End, unfortunately not translated at least for what I know. But it's a very interesting book that is called Una Little Italy nella Tene d'America. Translating is A Little Italy in the Athens of North America. Mm -hmm. Playing a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, again, uh, game on definition. So Boston, because of the many universities, considered a very central, cultural center in the United States. And the North End may be labeled as the little Italy. The point is that it's much more than this. It's not only the little Italy. It's a, a kind of complex uh, uh, neighborhood where uh, regional identity, national identity are continuously played, in my, in my opinion. One of the... Uh, can I turn off one moment yeah. because probably this will be Can you see? No. Okay. So then it's a matter of the configuration. Anyway, no, it doesn't matter. It's a matter of configuration of the computer. Yeah. Anyway, uh, to suggest uh, again this idea of how complex uh, can be how we define ourselves in terms of uh, identity. I, I want to tell you a little story that happened to me uh, when I was doing the research in the North End. Naturally, I used to stay for a long time in the Cafe Graffiti when it was in the Hanover Street. And, uh, it was a sort of office <laughs> for me. That <laughs> so I was there and it was um, July the 3rd. I was having my espresso, of course, in Italian, I must have espresso. And uh, I heard this sentence. And the sentence was, Compa, fascito non buono, fourth of July. This is a very short sentence, if you, very three seconds, not even. But see how people, again, use identity. Compa is the Italian term for compare, it's a short for compare, compare is the godfather. So in this case, people were talking about symbolic kinship that is very usual and very important to people in southern Italy. The godfather, the compare, is a very important figure, as you well know, because uh, it's connected with the education and with the well-being of the kid. The kid is uh, in the hand of the godfather, this, at least, <coughs> if we, according to tradition. The second part of the sentence was actually not even Italian, was Napolitan, facito non buono, eva nice, but it's not Italian, it's Napolitan. And again, here we are, we switch from the Italian uh, uh, identification to the Napolitan to end with eva fourth of July. English language talking about one of the most important fests in the United States. So in a sentence of three seconds, probably even less, we have people managing identity from the local identity, from the national identity Italian, to the local identity the Napolitan, and then to the new identity, which is the American. And this is important in my opinion, 
because uh, let's see if I can have because uh, they show you how people really navigate commute between their own feeling and these are just signs that uh, it took me a little while to understand why the the store that is uh, on the corner to Hanover was the corner store. I said, well, what does it mean, the corner store? <laughs> then finally I realized that maybe it was a kind of claim for a Bostonian identity <laughs> using language <laughs> and dialect, local dialect. So that, that's his, uh, that was the, <coughs> the, the original idea. And uh, one of the, uh, the I don't want to say the problem. One of the difficulties that you may have when you talk about the North End is actually to define the boundaries of the North End. Where the North End starts and where, where, what is the end? Where are the, the boundaries of the city, of this neighborhood? Uh, one, uh, one friend of mine here used to define, and I borrowed this sentence, uh, well, if you want to understand the North End, the North End is a state of mind surrounded by water, which I think that is lovely and actually tell you a lot of things about. And this actually was a, even a kind of a direction for the first part of um, my work. Again, trying to understand the, the boundaries. Uh, the idea of boundary in anthropology is not only, you know, a line on a map, but it's all the social uh, dynamics that they are around the, the, this line, this map. And I try to explain what, what I what I mean. The North End is a peninsula. So for three sides, it's surrounded by water. But wait a minute. Are we really sure that the idea of the ocean is the same if you are from Montefalcione. I don't know if there is anybody here from Montefalcione. Uh, close by. Uh, Montefalcione, or close by, mm -hmm. is a city uh, that is upon the hill. The people from Montefalcione, probably coming from Montefalcione, probably saw the, the sea the first time when they took the ship to come here in the United States. They barely have idea what is the ocean. What is the sea? If you are a fisherman from Shaka or people from Genoa, it's completely different. You are a fisherman. You deal with the sea every single day. So the idea of the ocean is completely different. And this idea of boundary change depending from where you are from. So it's kind of, uh, again, uh, interesting in my opinion speak about boundaries. Anyway, I, I'm going through some uh, map of the city of Boston, of course, focusing on the North End. This is, a, this is not a real map, actually. This is a reconstruction of a map. Uh, it's based on the Book of Possessions. Well, Book of, of Possession was uh, made uh, in the first part of the 17th century, it's actually the Italian catasto, meaning uh, you, know, you take note of who owns what and where. So, re making this map, you can see how, at the beginning, all these dots are houses, are places. You can see that even from the beginning, the North Ten was one of the most populated area of uh, of Boston, of the city of Boston, the first pilgrim, the first uh, <coughs> settlers, they move here in the North End. And uh, um, I think we can see something. You, this is uh, another map that is probably the most famous Boston map. It's the Bonner map in 1722. And you may notice how the North End is highly populated. And uh, who inhabited the North End back in, uh, in that time? Wealthy people. Pro the, the, mm, the colonial, 
people belonging to, I would say, I don't want to say the high class because the idea of class is not, not, not exact in this case. But the North End was a wealthy neighborhood. And uh, I don't know if you may see, probably I have a slide here, but then a little more. This is a more accurate, it's a particular. You may see here. Oops, I don't know what I did. Yeah, button, button in the center. This one? Not just to point, uh, oh, that doesn't matter. And uh, you may see here this strange line. This is actually the Mill Creek. It doesn't exist anymore, of course. It was filled up when the mill pond was filled up at the beginning of the 19th century. But it's important, symbolically speaking, this small creek. Because with the exception of two small bridges, the North End was no more a peninsula, but was an island. So it was separated from the city of Boston. And I guess this is relevant if we want to talk about uh, the neighborhood itself. So the rich neighborhood, the wealthy neighborhood, need to, to separate from the rest of the city. And they build a symbolic, actually not symbolic, uh, a real uh, division. Let's see if we can see here a little better. Mm -hmm. another particular. So that is a division. It's an, uh, this is a story, isn't it, that come back in the North End with this idea of being the island of Boston or being not. And it's not over yet, by the way. <laughs> and uh, let's see if we can add. Uh, in, uh, at the end of the 18th century, we still have uh, <coughs> the creek, and the mill pond is not yet filled. The, uh, the North End is still a wealthy place. Uh, there are very, for what I know, there are very few um, um, examples of uh, this time in, uh, in the North End. One is exactly right uh, in, in North Square, or really Rams. That's one of the few examples of uh, this time in the North End. What happened? Happened that at the end of the 18th century, things changed drastically in the North End. People that were loyalist to the English start to flee away toward Nova Scotia, Canada, and also to move out from the North End, which was no more a wealthy place. And in this 30, 40 year, from the end of the, of the 18th century to the beginning of the 19th century, the change in the North End was radical, traumatic, and, uh, and actually very relevant for the future of the, of the neighborhood. Very shortly, unfortunately, anyway, um, <coughs> what happened is that the wealthy people move out, and at the same time, this is actually very common in this kind of situation, you can see that uh, people that move out uh, are immediately substituted by people coming in. What is the difference? Is that the wealthy people move out and the people that came in were the first wave of immigration. And the first wave of immigration, you already know, is not the Italian, were Irish. People coming first in the North End were Irish. And this is important in order to understand the, the economic situation of the neighborhood because the Irish coming uh, uh, here, the, the characteristic of Irish immigration was the extreme poverty. We're talking about extreme poverty. And uh, there are studies that tell you actually how much money the Irish uh, coming at the beginning of the 19th century had in their own pocket when they left in Boston. And they don't have even enough money to move away from the North End. So they came here with nothing in their pocket, with no skill, they were all unskilled workers, 
And the only place they were kept, that they could find a place, a job, was the harbor. Therefore, they stayed in the North End and they didn't move in, from the North End for a long period of time. And uh, so you have this kind of change in the, in the North End from the wealthy place to a slum. Slum is a term that, by the way, a sociologist of the 20th century used to describe the North End, William White, <laughs> which is one of the most important sociological book of the 20th century. Anyway, uh, so the North End became, uh, became um, a slab. You know, and uh, interesting uh, enough, at least from my perspective, this is also the time when the Mill Creek was filled up. Reason, we don't need anymore a physical boundary between the North End and the rest of the city. The symbolic boundary made by the poverty of the place and the extreme uh, this idea of slum is more than enough uh, to leave the rest of the city out from the north end. So we are still talking about an island, but we don't talk anymore about a physical boundary, but a, about a symbolic boundary. Let's see if there are any other. Uh, uh, let's see if I can go directly to this one. Of course, I'm, I apologize because I'm jumping. Uh, uh, I would like to stress on other topics too. Anyway, uh, the, how the, the population change in, in the North End, the ethnic uh, stock, how they change. So we can see that until the 1870, the, 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 the North End mostly was Irish, with very few exceptions. Things start to change in 1880 for two different reasons. On one end, after almost a century, the Irish were climbing the social ladder. They were becoming wealthy, they had become important in the social life of Boston. Therefore, they start to move out from the North End toward the new, <coughs> new neighborhood, Dorchester, West Roxbury, and so on. And, but also because other immigrants, they were coming in the, in the North End. And again, it's not yet the time of the Italian. It's the time of the Jewish from Eastern Europe which they stayed in the North End a very short period of time, but the change that they made in the North End, the Google, if we talk about the architecture and the urban uh, scenario of the city was very important. Uh, the immigration, uh, the Jewish immigration is completely different from the, the, the Irish one. Not because they were not poor, but because when they came here, they were already, they had a complete different job niche. So they were not unskilled, they were peddlers. That means they have a trade, which means they could have quickly help from the community, but also they could make enough money quick to go away from the North End, Brooklyn and all its area of, uh, of Boston. So the 20 years of the Jewish presence in the North End were, again, were a short period of time, but was very relevant about the, the, the global the architecture of the, the North End. Then finally came the Italian. In, uh, and I use many quotes about the Italian, because as I said before, we are talking about people uh, that maybe didn't even know that Italy was already a country. You know better than me that Italy became a country in 1861, but was a political unification, was not even an economic unification, and certainly was not a cultural unification. You st still now in 2012, you see the difference between people from the north, people from the south, from one city to another city. Can you imagine 150 years ago? It was, of course, much, much uh, different 
Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, when the Italian came here, again, they didn't recognize themselves as Italian. They could recognize as Napolitan, Genoese, so, no, whatever. You know. But the idea of Italians came later. And uh, what is interesting to suggest is uh, the Italian pattern of immigration, of immigration. Uh, the Italian, uh, different from the Jewish and much more different from the Irish, uh, they were called birds of passage. The people from Italy that move away from Italy, they didn't have the slight idea to stay in the United States. They wanted to come here, by the way, not only in the United States, because the Italian immigration was all over the world. But uh, in the people coming here in the United States, they have just one thing in their mind, make enough money to be back home and actually build a home in their own village. That is the pattern of Italian immigration. And that is important because it tells you a lot of things on who were the Italian coming. If you look at the Irish and the Jewish, you see family moving here immediately. You see single men, you see single women, young people, old people. There is no differentiation in this pattern. You look at the Italian and you immediately see that the Italian immigrant, the pattern of Italian immigration is young, single, and very often not completely unskilled. He knows some of the trade. So it's a complete different pattern of, uh, of immigration. But I have to be said that if this was the idea, that was a means that they actually could. You know, some of them, they, they could be back to the sending country. Some of them, they stay. So now the question is, what happens when they stay? Well, when they stay, they start what is called chain migration, which is, let's say, I am 20 years old, moving from Montefalcione to Boston, North End. I decide I want to stay here. So what I do? I wrote a letter. I write a letter to my father, to my brother, to my friends, all male way, yeah? this is a male line. So I call them in order to come with me in this place, because there is job, because the, the streets are paid by gold or whatever. Yeah? And, and somebody said, yes, I paid it by gold, but actually I work it on the street. <laughs> so anyway, and uh, uh, so there is this change. So people call first through the mail uh, direction, and then, of course, in a second time, they recall the, the daughter, the wives, the mother, and so on. So what happens is that you have the rebuilding of the original village in the receiving country. People from Genoa, they never came out from the North Square area. You couldn't find Genoese people in Endicott Street. And when later they come the other people, people from Montefalcione, they were gathered around Endicott Street. They didn't come here. When the Genoese left the North Square area, where the Shakadan coming here, here and in the West End. So what, what do you have? It's a kind of situation I hope that I can show you very, very shortly. So this is the composition of the neighborhood. That is a, this map is made um, from uh, a William De Marco book, which is a very interesting book on the North End. So the green are, of course, the Irish. And you see the other very small settlement. And Ten years later, things start changing. So you have still the Irish, but then the yellow are the Jewish. And then you have the people from Abruzzo, and here the Sicilian. 
and uh, you see the, the gray, you cannot see the much that this is the gray, there was the Genoese uh, settlement here. And you see 15 years later how now the neighborhood become Italian, in quote, because the Irish and the Jewish, even if they are still there, are start living. And let's see if I have. In 1925, this is the composition of the neighborhood. So you can notice that the, the Genoese left. Of course, when I say the Genoese, <laughs> I don't know who it goes to. So. The Genoese left, uh, even if somebody stayed, of course, I'm talking about the group, <clears throat> because they move west towards San Francisco, California. And, and again, their place was filled up from other people, mostly Sicilian, and from Abruzzo. What is interesting in the North End is the fact that you have what is called the ethnic enclave, meaning you have the rebuilding of the original village in the small scale of the North End. So you have, that's why I feel a little uncomfortable on talking about little Italy about the North End. No. The North End is made by the ethnic enclave of the Shakadani, which, by the way, is different from the ethnic enclave of people from um, Augusta. Sicily, but not the same thing. Or people from Palermo, Sicily, but not the same thing. So there are differences between, between these uh, ethnic and clan, between this neighborhood in the neighborhood, you know? And uh, again, I don't want to make a, a long, uh, I want to make this story quite, quite short. The point is, uh, when uh, the uh, uh, the Italian Crimea, or, or actually you know, the Shakatani, Palermitani, and so on and so on. One thing was important for them to bring not only the body, but also the culture. So what they brought with them was a fundamental uh, thing for the whole for Southern Italian, but I would say for Italian, which is which is the religious uh, uh, feeling. I, mm, I don't speak directly for, about religion, because religion can be a slippery term in this case. In other terms, and I, to, to try to, to, to explain what I mean, the religiosity, above all in 19th century, that a priest can have is very different from the religiosity that a simple man in the street can have. That's why many scholars talk about religion of the street. The idea, the, the, the connection between the believers and her own faith, her own god or goddess, it's completely different. To make again an example, one of the biggest, and unfortunately I know that uh, it lasts for a long time, and we are in a place that lived this kind of problem. The possibility to understand each other between Irish hierarchy and Italian believers, both Catholic, was very hard. What is hard now? back then was basically impossible. There is no way, <coughs> because they belong to the same religion, but to a different idea of religion, there is no way that they could understand the devotion to the saint. This idea of uh, talking directly with your saint because you are sick and you need to be saved by the saint, to pray directly, it's something that doesn't stay very much in, in, the, in the idea of the Catholic hierarchy. Now, of course, this is just an example. And uh, so one of the things that they wrote was the religious fest, the fest for their own patron saints. 
this um, kind of particular devotion that every single neighborhood in the neighborhood can have. And that's why people from Shaka, they start to, to make their own fest, Madame de Zucot, people from the Monte Falcione, they start to have their own fest, Sant'Antonio di Pado. Then you have uh, uh, Santa Rosalia from Palermo, which I don't know if it's still, uh, they make still the fest about that. And Santa Maria, Anzano, Puglia, and so on. So you see, every single neighborhood suggests their own festival. This is their own fest. This is uh, basically for one reason. Because I have to declare in my own community that I am from Anzano. I am from Monte Falcione, I am from Shaka. But it's not only declaring inside, it's also to declare outside. So people from Shaka, they have to understand that I am not like them, I am from Monte Falcione. We are different. And we live in a different place, we have different devotion for different saints, and we make different procession, or at least different streets that are worked by the procession. So that, the, 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 the very interesting, in my opinion, aspect of the North End cultural and religious, uh, and religious life, this uh, uh, really very rich example of, uh, of religiosity and of claim of their own local uh, identity. Now, there are, of course, other reasons about the fest. Uh, is, uh, is, is just one of the many examples, of course. I, I like to, to think that it's one of the most important. But, of course, there are differences if we are talking about the religious fest in the beginning of the 20th century, or if we are talking about the fest in 2012. Actually, I stopped in 2007 because that was my last time I was attending the fest. There are different, um, more meaning, in my opinion, the more that you, you go ahead in history. Mm. Again, if at the beginning was just claiming for your own local origin, later on it became much more complex, the situation. And, uh, you know that for a long time, the idea of uh, being ethnic was a kind of problematic idea in the United States that came back only in the 70s. And that's why many historians uh, say uh, the first generation tried to forget what the third generation tried to remember. So it's a kind of complicated. So uh, you start to have him back this uh, claim for ethnicity only late, only in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the 70s was a big moment of change in the North Tent. And here we are with the last, uh, I want to say contradiction, but with the last uh, paradox. So in the 70s, with the gentrification of the North End, mm -hmm. all the waterfront, the rise of the price and the real estate and so on and so on, the Italian people start to move out. But that is exactly the moment when the North End start saying we are Italian and start to declare to all the, 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 the other part of course that they are Italian. So that is a kind of paradox which has, in my opinion, uh, an explanation. And the explanation, sorry to say, is economic. I, I guess, and walking tonight on Hanover Street, I see that thing didn't change that one of the main uh, uh, important business in the North End is food, but it's not food in general, it's Italian food. So the, the, the importance of uh, being an Italian neighbor is fundamental for support the economic the economy of the, of the, of the neighbor. Of course it's not only this, but this is one of the, the, the most important things. 
And I want to conclude the coming back with the idea of, uh, of the boundary. The North End became in the 70s, uh, again, uh, a wealthy place. The gentrification, the upcoming gear, real estate, restaurant business, and, and so on and so on. And, uh, and for a long time, the, the North End was again the island of Boston because of the building of the John Fitzgerald Expressway and then of the big, uh, big dig. I was crossing uh, tonight uh, from a market. And I remember when I used to come here and I need to go all through the tunnel <laughs> line. <laughs> and now you have this wonderful park. It was a, it was a kind of odd <laughs> feeling. But again, it's a matter of boundaries. So I remember back then many people asking me, what now that the big deal is, will be over? What will happen? You know, because we lose our own wall. We lose our defense. Well, of course I don't know <laughs> what will happen, but I like to think that the North End is still you know, enough strong to, to, to not be back as a slum, absolutely. I think uh, actually the opposite, because uh, again, because of this uh, ethnic claim of, of identity. And uh, I believe that even if now the last sentence, census was telling you that only the 25% of the people living in the North End can claim Italian heritage, still the neighborhood is an Italian neighborhood. With all the, you know, the kind of uh, variation that I said before. And is and will be an Italian uh, neighborhood, even in this strange uh, way, again, because of economic, because of the, the must be uh, Italian. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's simply a nonsense. In one of the main symbols that the Italian understand, and not only the Italian, they use in order to claim uh, their own ethnic identity, so it's actually the fest, which uh, again let us think about uh, the memory of uh, the, the old country. I remember a couple of times people asking me, so what, what, what do you think about Federal Hill in Providence? Well, Federal Hill is just like the, the is a kind of boundary of the neighborhood with a lot of restaurants. But Federal Hill will never be like the North End for one reason, and the reason is the fest, because they have no other religious fest that they are here. I like to stop here because there are, of course, there are so many things to, 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 to say about the North End, but maybe it's more interesting if we start a kind of discussion, if you like. You know. I would like to, if you okay, please. <laughs> so thank you very much for your patience. <laughs> so if you have any question, you I am. I try to answer for what I can, of course. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Please. Is the North End considered the largest Italian community now in the United States? Because you had Brooklyn before. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then San Francisco. Added. So the North End would be probably the largest Italian community. I would like to say yes. Because uh, even if... Uh, the, the, one of the problems, and this actually, I'm sorry to open up this memory, is actually uh, came out this discussion when... Uh, they were closing down the Sacred Art as a parish. You know? One thing that, to me, it, it's important is, is to make a, a distinction between the neighborhood itself and the feeling of the, the neighborhood. So, one thing that was said back then was, why we need another parish, an Italian parish, when we have just the 25% of people from, from Italy or anyway claiming for an Italian. And what they miss completely is that all the surrounded area they came here because of the feeling mm -hmm. of the, the being from the North. You know. So 
My answer is yes, in general. I do believe that the, the North End is, in this moment, one of the most, uh, still one of the most important uh, Italian community in the United States. But on top of this, I like to think that the North End is a kind of, really, kind of uh, uh, decor. You know, all the people from Malden, from uh, all the, the, the suburban area of the North End, they used to, and I like to think they still do, every Sunday morning they came here. They came here because they want to go to the mass, because they want to buy the lobster tail at Mike, they want to have the espresso, and they want to meet the old people. So, is this the difference, in my opinion, that you can see? People from Williamsburg that move to New Jersey, they stay in the New Jersey when it's up. They don't go back to Williamsburg. Maybe they come back for the big fest of the Gili, but that's the only one. Please. Yes. Right. I'm curious. Why did the Genoese move west? I know our, our family is Genoese on my yes. father's side. Yeah. Yeah. And they did move west. Well, again, I have absolutely no idea why they were. I, I, I can <clears throat> naturally, when I say the Genoese move west, move, move west, I'm talking about the general pattern. Yes. And in this pattern, of course, they are subject that ch that may follow this pattern, may not. But in general, the Genoese move there for one reason: business, yeah. because uh, the Italian that were here, like the Irish a little more than the Irish, but they were still unskilled workers. The Genoese uh, that came here first uh, and they started the business, Pastin and so on and so on, they understood that they could have much more business in uh, San Francisco and California. So mostly of them, they moved back to, mm. they, they moved to, to, to California for this reason, basically. You know. People, why they s decide to stay here, well, maybe for so many reasons, but in general, they move because of this reason. Yeah. Please. It's funny, when you say businessmen, because it was the Genoese that started Sacred Art Church. Oh, they yes. It was all Genoese. <laughs> yes. And when they started it, mm -hmm. they were very clever. They made the, uh, the church a trust. And that's a... Uh, Smart. It's a very smart thing. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it, in, uh, well, but you know that uh, even for the, in Italy, the, the, the Italian people think about the Genoese that they are really smart in business. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's something that evidently you guys carry here in the new country. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Jack. I don't know if you can comment on this, but perceptions in Italy mm. of Italians in the Indian Ocean or Italian Americans mm -hmm. in general. Do you know? Well, uh, that, 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 that's, a, that's a big question, because uh, the problem is, uh, if we are talking, for instance, uh, and, and it happened to me to, to, when I was working on the fest, uh, I did follow the fest uh, in the North End, and then the fest in the original village. And often it happened that I found people from Boston there. That was very nice. <laughs> and I can tell you that in this kind of case, there is a really commonality. People, probably because they are parents or because they are paisani, you know, that the idea of the Italian coming back is nice. You know, they were very well welcome. Now, if we are talking more in general, uh, well, things are a little different. And <laughs> I think I told you this thing personally. And it's not always in this way. You know, that, uh, Things change in the perception of Italian about it. American in general and Italian American. About American in general, I can say my two kids are living in Caserta and they refuse for the 12 years that I am in Boston to come to see me in Boston. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to even talk about it. When I was a kid, I would start swimming from Italy to come <laughs> <and> stay. <laughs> so how things change. You know. The idea of Italian-American, well, beside all the imaginary that, you know, is carried, unfortunately, through stereotypes, often that you can see in TV, which is not exactly the best, uh, let's say, propaganda that you can have uh, about it. Uh, 
I would say that th th it's not a matter of, uh, uh, it's just you don't recognize anymore. You know what I mean? It's kind of different. You know, so. But I would say this is more Euro trash again. You know? <laughs> but I don't really uh, think that um, that really happened. And uh, the only thing is uh, the power of uh, uh, Hollywood the movies, the power of uh, American TV. It's really big. So I can tell you that the first thing that uh, an Italian can think about Italian American is Tony Soprano. Mm -hmm. Mm, and that's not really <laughs> the best thing I can imagine. <laughs> Please. Um, I'm Mary I'm I'm actually not from this neighborhood and I'm not Italian. Uh -huh. But I've lived here for ten years uh -huh. and I've gotten to know a lot of people that live here. Uh -huh. And something interesting that I've heard from them was growing up here as Italian American, yeah. they often would look down upon Italian immigrants coming here. Oh that's uh, and kind of call them yeah. really derogatory names. Oh yeah. And it but was it's kind of like an interesting dynamic I always felt it's like. Very interesting. And they, a lot of people here didn't grow up even speaking Italian. Oh, that, uh, if I may answer in the true segment of your question, language is uh, the first thing that Italian lose. Mm -hmm. So you have several narratives uh, of people telling you, when my father and my mother start to speak Italian, they move to a different room. Mm -hmm. There is really this kind of uh, really distance. You're I mean, for me, it's just, I grew up actually, um, my family's Greek, uh -huh. where it was very important to always speak Greek. Oh, absolutely. And I've noticed with the Greek communities, they're, the kids to this day, many of my Greek-American friends yeah. speak Greek. Uh, if but I know here in the North End, many people that grew up here don't speak Italian at you all. You can bet well, the, the first generation, the first generation of Italians, they probably yeah. speak Italian. The second the generation, generation, they don't know. Mm. It's a choice. Mm. I believe that it's connected with this idea of bird of passage. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you want to be back to your country, then you don't need to learn English. Sure. But if you stay here, then you have to try the best you can to let your new generation to accommodate being assimilated in the new country. I'm not telling you it's right or wrong. Yeah, it's just interesting observation, yeah. just, um, mm -hmm. just hearing stories about it. Oh, yeah, I found no. it very interesting that there was yeah. a kind of a disconnect. Absolutely. Yeah. But I also find it interesting, too, is maybe you were here during the World Cup when oh, yeah. Italy won, right. how crazy this neighborhood Absolutely. got. And it was so amazing to me that there, everyone felt this real amazing connection to Italy. I've never seen a neighborhood like that, the, even during the festival. It was like all the festivals combined yeah. on steroids. Oh, yes. I know, I know. And, uh, <laughs> I can tell you, that probably helped on making a little sense of what I want to say. One sentence that uh, a guy belonging to the... Montefalcione Society told me and uh, that I think that is uh, unbelievably clear and complex at the same time. The guy told me this simple thing. Uh, when I carry the statue of St. Anthony, I am from Montefalcione. Mm -hmm. If I am sitting in front of the TV watching a soccer game, I am from Italy. But I've never been to Italy. I don't speak yeah, the yeah. Italian language. And when I will be there, I will be a tourist. Mm -hmm. And we are again with all the negotiation yeah. of identity yeah. so that you we were talking about. Yeah. And it's really interesting. And uh, the point is, again, from my perspective, that is not everything that he said is authentic. It depends on the moment. It depends on the context. So when the guy is carrying the statue of St. Anthony, he is really from Montefalcione. It's not faking anything. Yeah. It really is that. And if, as you say, if there is the World Cup, yeah. they are crazy. And they are probably and more Italian than the Italian. And they really felt that way. I thought, like, <laughs> I, as an observer, I felt like it was very genuine. That oh, people I'm, really felt it and were really bet, into it. I, I absolutely agree with you. They're absolutely yeah. authentic and genuine. No way. I mean, I, no doubt at all. But again, this tells you how identity is a slippery term, you know, that how you can handle, you know, and the only thing, if I may say this little example, I told you before at the beginning, you know, that I felt immediately at home in the North End, but was obviously in Italy. Because the North End is not Italian. It is in Boston. <laughs> it's not a neighborhood of Naples. Whatever does it mean being Italian in Naples? 
principles, by the way. And uh, uh, I have to tell you, when, when you do this job, you know, that you move away from home, you have to pay very much attention on the feeling of nostalgia. To me, it was so comfortable feeling at the north end, in the north end at all. I mean, I was 5,000 miles far away from home. You know, I have friends here, I have the double parking, you know, and I like to use <laughs> that I am home. And I have to tell you when uh, I realized that I was not at home, which is a kind of a funny story, but set the difference in the distance that you were talking about. I was uh, uh, following a procession, actually the procession, uh, the St. Anthony procession, but the little St. Anthony, the one that was carried by then by the uh, St. Leonard Church. So the guys were carrying the statue, and you know that during the procession, people respect the saint, often pinning the money on the saint, but also the saint respect something. No? So you very easily you can see the saint that stop in front of another society, that stop in front of the church, and that's fine. I can understand that. And then uh, he was stopping at the beginning of Hanover Street, in front of the fire station. Now, for you American guys, I'm sorry if I use this term, and I, I don't want to set any distance, it's just try to tell you the difference. It's not. For you guys in the United States, that makes a lot of sense because fire station, the people that work in the fire department, they are heroes. And they are really heroes because they really make a job that is much more than a job. In Italy, it's completely different. People that work in a fire station are workers. So there is no way that the saint will stop in front of a fire station mm -hmm. to, to pay respect. That was the moment that I understood that I was not in it. <laughs> <laughs> Please. A couple of questions, two questions. Sure. Does Italy still have the festivals the way we have in the North End? And the other question is, uh, like in America, I'm American, but they consider, I'm considered an Italian-American. Oh, sure. But yeah. you're saying in Italy, they would just regard, us, regard me as an American, not even uh -huh. recognize mm -hmm. my Ancestry. Well, the, the, the true answer, I, uh, you, have, um, the <coughs> you have the same fest in Italy. I mean, uh, if you go in Montefalcione the last weekend of August, you will have the St. Anthony Fest. But there are very big differences between them. And I want to point out one main difference, which is who run the fest. Here are uh, societies. Mm -hmm. Our uh, association, which is a typical American characteristic. You can go back to Tocqueville, Weber, and whoever sociologist you want to name, everybody will talk about association, how American is the idea of association. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the ownership of the fest is not the Catholic hierarchy, even if you see the priest. But it's a long story even about that. The ownership of the fest in it is the church. Don't even think that you can have a, a procession without the priest. And he is the main character. <laughs> Forget about the president of the society. This is not going to happen. And there are, of course, they are narrative that explain you why this thing happened, which are probably important, probably not. You can find a lot of narrative telling you that at the beginning uh, the priest wanted all the money on the statue and then the people didn't want to give to them, so therefore the priest kicked them off the statue from the, the church and they put in their own apartment and so on and so on and so on. <laughs> so there are a lot of explanations about that, which are, in my opinion, not really are interesting, but not really fundamental. You know, what you have is this kind of separation that is narrated through the story between hierarchy, church hierarchy, and association. And uh, uh, I know that now things change it a little bit. I don't know how much they really change. I would like to see, but I have to wait a little bit more to do that. 
So that is the main difference. You know, that in Italy, uh, the procession, the fest, is a matter of the church. Here is a matter of an association, and it's a huge difference. And I think that is a very important. And if, if I may say something, I <laughs> prefer very much <laughs> this situation than the other one. <laughs> and uh, uh, the second question that that, 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 that you raise, yes, that is what that this idea of um, of American that uh, people in Italy can have. I'd like to 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 stress again this idea that Italian American, the Italian American feeling of uh, belonging, of identity, came out very, very strongly after the 70s. I mean, it's not that before they were, they were not. But if you look at it, we said before, there is no more language. The Italian is not, an, I don't know, you know, it's certainly one of the things that the second generation, third generation, fourth generation, Probably the fourth generation maybe know, know something of Italian because we went to school, but not because of direct transmission mm -hmm. between the, uh, the family. But again, in the 70s, while uh, before people tried to accommodate to the mainstream America, in the 70s, the idea with the civil rights and so on, the idea of ethnic pride came out very strongly, and you still have this kind. Uh, Italy, again, as I say, you know, uh, they probably, when you were there, they, 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 they heard your, your, uh, your accent, mm -hmm. your language, and they say, okay, you are American, so why you want to call yourself Italian-American? Why bother, you know what I mean? <laughs> and of course, uh, Italy has a complete different experience of uh, multi-ethnic uh, society. Now we are talking uh, about multi-ethnic society, but in America, it's 200 years old. This thing is always much more. <laughs> Please. We have a friend in there that lives on Lake Como. He's Italian. He comes, Como. He comes from uh, Como. Uh, and uh, he was visiting us uh, about five years ago. Uh, and so we took him to the North End. And he said, you know, this was his observation. He said, you people are sort of like locked into a particular period. He said, the period when you left Italy. Mm -hmm. He said, but you think the way you think and the way the things that you do, we no longer do. We've mm -hmm. gone on beyond this. But in this particular neighborhood, you seem to be frozen, at least in, not entirely, but somewhat in time. Is this true or is, not, is it not true? In some case, yes. And I make an example to, to explain what I mean. I make an example with food. Lasagna, okay? And I had the pleasure to be in the North End for several Thanksgiving, host, you know, guests of friends. So they always uh, invited me for the Thanksgiving. And they used to make uh, turkey, cranberry, stuffing, mm -hmm. but the beginning was lasagna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this tells you already a lot of things about <laughs> being Italian, 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 and so Now the question is, what kind of, uh, of lasagna? And uh, the, the one that, uh, uh, the, the lasagna that you can have now in Italy is made with uh, a very light ragu, a lot of bechamel sauce, uh, and it's very light. And by the way, the portion is, uh, you know, homeopathic. <laughs> you know, something like this. The lasagna that you have here is completely different. Is filled with ragu, sausages, uh, egg, pea, whatever. You know what I mean? So the point is, what kind of lasagna is this? This lasagna that you can have here is the ritual food of the big ceremony in Italy at the beginning of the 19th, of the 20th century. So that is uh, the answer on. Uh, but on the on the other hand, uh, if this is true for some symbols, another symbol. During the procession, you can pin the money on the saint. In Italy, you cannot. You have to pin the money on different places, not on the saint. So this kind of change are not the change that you can see in the So you can see differences. 
And it's very interesting to see differences here that remind you of a thing that you could see in Italy at the beginning of the 20th century, in the moment of the big migration. You know? But I don't think that is a matter of being frozen in time. Actually, again, I think that people know very well what they are doing. You know? And they pick up symbols and say, OK, this is fine in this way. This we need to change. Even if in tradition, changes are kind of dangerous. So I'll make another example. And you, you know better than me the, the, the procession how they made, no? So the question is, who carried the statue of the saint? Always male, always. Who hold the ribbon that the, pin, the money will be pinned? Always women, never other kind of situation. Now we can start talking about gender differentiation in a society that is matriarchal, but forget it, it's not what <laughs> I'm going to. And the thing is, this is tradition. It doesn't matter the reason. Back then, in 2003, the Madonna del Soccorso Society <coughs> tried to make a change. And for a very small uh, trait, where the women of the society carrying the staff, it didn't last. It didn't last because it was too much transgressive concerning tradition. I do not make any sense with that. Mm -hmm. So it's always a kind of dynamic. So you can change, but you don't go too far. And in some case, like the, uh, your friend telling you, you know, it seems like frozen in time. Well, I will ask your friend, Seba, did you wonder why this thing happened? And we come back to the answer that I tried to, to, to give, which is because this neighborhood need completely to show to the other people mm -hmm. this is an Italian neighborhood, mm -hmm. is a need, is a matter of, uh, again, of economy, is a matter of ethnic claim, is a matter of belonging. So I would say, Yes, but in part. And I will answer also that, you know, even when they make the lasagna with all the stuff that we don't eat anymore, they know very well what they are doing. They are telling me, I am more Italian than you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Please. So do you feel like as this neighborhood gentrifies, which it is very much so, mm -hmm. pretty rapidly, that these traditions will still kind of carry on and maybe even more so, more tightly, as people feel like they have to stake their claim on it so much? I absolutely believe so. Yeah, so there... And, uh, and uh, th there is a concept that comes again from an economy, which is the idea of scarce resorts. So in this moment, uh, Italian identity in the North End is a scarce resort. 25% of the Italian claiming for uh, Italian rights. But at the same time, you need to be Italian. You must. There is no way. I mean, the only restaurant that is not Italian in Hanover Street, if they didn't change, is a Chinese takeaway. That, that's the only one. Mm -hmm. you know, so how can you support mm -hmm. this economy? And there is another element, by the way, I'm showing in this moment just the most evident. How can you support this if you do not declare in every kind of think you can, that you are Italian. And uh, food is, of course, is one of the many. Uh, but there is another, probably more intangible, uh, I would say, uh, richness in the, in the North End, which is the idea of village. Mm -hmm. The idea of village was actually one of the main ideas that support the gentrification of the neighborhood, because uh, People here in the North End felt safe. They felt uh, the atmosphere of the original village, uh, the, the atmosphere. Now, the problem is not that it is true or it is not true. And it's not even a matter of actually who were the people that uh, made you feel, feel, feel safe. You know? There are several narratives about that. You know? uh, back then, uh, we could go all around the neighborhood and nobody could touch you because there were people looking at you. 
there are several narratives like this that somehow give you the hint of uh, guardians, let's put it in this way, in a very nice way that actually were different people. And uh, so this is another thing that have to be, have to stay in the way it is. You cannot say, okay, the North End now is a multi-ethnic uh, neighborhood, which is a multi-ethnic neighborhood, but must be claimed as it are. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise the idea of the Italian village disappear. Mm -hmm. Therefore disappear the economic value of the real estate. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that they really want to do that. Sure. You know what I mean? I mean, I, it's interesting though, I think because maybe the idea of village so much has created like um, like a real sense of community, even oh, for sure. people here that aren't Italian, for example, mm -hmm. like in all of the associations we have in this neighborhood, which there are plenty, yeah. but people really care and it's yes. really amazing and it's just kind of everyone feels really a stake in it, even if it's not an ethnic claim, no, there's no. still very much a... I absolutely it's, agree, it's, bottom line. But I think, I think maybe like the overarching feeling kind of created that. It's interesting. I, 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 the fact, uh, I, one of the final points on, on the book uh, that I tried to, 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 to reach was exactly, I guess, in what you say. You know, bottom line, if the, coming back to the fest, you know, if you can speak about Montefalcione fest back in the beginning of 20th century, which was St. Anthony, the procession, people paying money, and so on and so on. In 2012, <coughs> the differences, the structural differences between the festival, Shaka, Montefalcione, and so on, they are not. I'm not telling you that the festival, they look alike. I'm talking about structure here. The structure is the same. And this tells you an important thing, which is exactly what you say. We are no more talking about ethnic and clan. We are no more talking about Little Italy in general. We're not talking about the North End. The North End is an identity. And it's a pretty strong one, in my opinion. You know? So in, in this kind of, of uh, claim for a local identity, all the, the sentences, I am Italian, I am not, uh, I am from Montefalcione, and so on and so on, you may see how they can be used or not, depending on what you are talking about. So if I may say, uh, uh, the, the, the idea of identity on one end is uh, very ambiguous, it's very slippery, you know, so again, can be, can be a problem to define. But on the other hand, it's a very powerful tool to tell somebody else what you are, what you want they think you are. I don't, I don't know if it makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, it. Totally. So it is, it is a game, you know, and it's a conscious game. I, I strongly believe on that. <laughs> Please. My grandparents, they all came from Italy. Mm -hmm. Great grandparents came and left. They made their money here yeah. and went back. I don't feel this is an Italian neighborhood. I'm born and raised here. Mm -hmm. To me, it's, I liken it to maybe Disneyland or mm -hmm. Epcot Center. Yeah. Uh, because there's restaurants serving Italian food, <laughs> does not make it Italian. Um, Growing up, it was confusing for well for me mm -hmm. because they my grandparents spoke Italian yeah. and I spoke no English. Mm -hmm. Now I can, do not understand any Italian because at school they would make fun of you no, if you spoke no, Italian and you wanted to be American. Mm -hmm. And now the opposite. Mm -hmm. My daughter was in Florence mm -hmm. for the summer. And they insisted, they couldn't understand that she was American. They kept telling her, no, mm -hmm. you're Italian. You do not act like an American. Mm -hmm. She was confused. Well, what do we act like? So um, it's all confusing. <laughs> the game of identity is always confusing. <laughs> if I may say, uh, I, I'm not surprised that this confused, confusion comes from you, that you are a, grew up here, born here, and so you could you could attend the change of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So you lived on your own uh, experience uh, how this neighborhood was back then and is now. No? So this uh, 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 witnessing the, the change make you feel confused, if I may say. I, if I may say also, I 
think this is something that happens probably everywhere if you are in the same place because it's changed. Things change in life, and of course, uh, the idea of nostalgia was telling it's before, you know, yes. it's, <laughs> it's there, classes. you know what I mean. And uh, it's more like this land. I, by the way, you remind me of another nice definition of somebody that say, "What we are talking about the North End? North End is smaller. It's smaller than Disneyland parking lot." <laughs> I love this definition, <laughs> but actually, maybe smaller than the parking lot in Disneyland. But the dynamics that show up in the North End are really interesting from my perspective. You know, I think one thing um, we all benefited from. At least I did. As a young child, my grandmother, mm -hmm. any friends you brought, mm -hmm. where are they from? No, yeah. What do you mean? Where was your mother from? And I couldn't understand this. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, they're Genoese. Mm -hmm. And they're Shakadana. They're Italian. <laughs> I didn't understand. But by being all together, we learned all the different cultures. Yeah of the different areas of Italy. The food, we learned all the different ways of preparing food. The children did. It was wonderful. Well, I, and if I may say, this kind of um, narrative was also, I heard about the, the communication, for instance, with the Jewish people in the North mm -hmm. End, the West End, and, uh, and always the idea was this kind of, uh, you know, being together in a nice way. But if I may say, it's always connected on what you are doing, if I may say. So the daily life, I'm sure that what you say is actually the general thing. So in the daily life, you don't care if you are from Shack, you are from Genoa, or Children whatever. Tell. But if you are a, a member of a society, then things can change. Mm -hmm. That's right. I remember another sentence, say that guy from the the, the Society of uh, Montefalcione, St. Anthony. And this guy was uh, really, I have to say, really funny. But he told me at one point, you know, things are so changing here in the North End. You know, before we could be in this society only if we were connected with Montefalcione. Exactly. Guess what? Now the president is from Sicily. But thank God he's not from Shaka. <laughs> 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 Yeah. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> again, a lot of things. <laughs>